The very first one was the ZX80, which um, that, it actually came out in 1979. And then there was a slightly smart, rather smarter one the next year, the ZX81. We knew that there would be a market for the ZX80 with um, hobbyists because of that already existed. But I hoped that there'd be a market that was much greater than that in terms of people who had never thought of owning a computer, i.e. members of the public, and that, that turned out to be the case. There were two sections. Uh, one was very young people, which was perhaps not so surprising, but the other was, was, was um, retired people, and they took to it very much because they'd got time available to, uh, to spend to, to learn how to use it, and, and, and so retired people were a very big market. Sinclair's aim was to produce a computer that people could afford, rather than a computer that had a practical purpose. And yet people still bought it anyway, because it was interesting, because it was a novelty. To load a program, you had to have a tape recorder, um, and you connected it up. You were very careful when you were connecting it up. You press play, it, it makes wonderful noise. And five minutes later, it would go, program not loaded and you have to start again. It's incredibly unfunny. Of course, in those days, we didn't care because we didn't know that things could be better. It was still wonderful, the fact you could load programs. The ZX80 and its immediate successor, the ZX81, were astonishingly successful. But for Sinclair, the best was yet to come. Following that, we brought out the ZX Spectrum, which was the first one that had colour, and that, then the sales really took off, and we sold, we sold many millions of those. And indeed, um, I, I learned the other day that the Russians still, still use them um, very widely for, for running, running just about everything over there. They're not, they're, they, may, they copied them illegally, but uh, there we are. <laughs> when we first started, um, we realized obviously that there, was a, there, were, there would be a games aspect. But the first appeal was to people who wanted to, to get their hands on one and, and, and do some programming themselves which they loved doing. I mean, children took to that dramatically. And it's a bit sad today that that really isn't available to them. Uh, that's all changed. Um, but in those days, um, you know, children could get hold of one of these and very swiftly learn to program. 